بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبت في الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته حياكم الله أسأل الله كريم رب العرش العظيم أن يتولنا في الدنيا والآخرة May Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless us and protect us all in this life as well as the hereafter May Allah سبحانه وتعالى preserve us and forgive us and guide us and bless us to be sources of good and guidance and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ikhlas, with the bad Allah sunnah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ahabati fillah. No doubt we live in strange times. Times of great difficulty. And times of great fitna. Fitna from Joanib. Our men, Janabain. That we live in a time <coughs> <coughs> in which we have different kinds of trials and tribulations and fitna. From primarily two different ways. And under those two different ways, uh, there are many branches and many different types of fitna that people face. The first way, Habatifillah, is through a shabahat, through doubtfulness. Meaning that through ways of aqidah, false beliefs, false ideologies, that come and plague us and harm us as believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They affect our creed. And they can cause you to either go into bid'ah, religious innovation, through a, a type of belief that the action that you're doing or the type of worship is legislated. And it being counter to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or... Through actual disbelief, undermining your belief, your aqidah, things that challenge your Islam, and maybe you do not have the tools and the ability and the fortitude to be able to protect yourself and your, your aqidah. The second way, the second type of fitna in general is the fitna of the shahwat fitna to shahwat meaning the fitna or difficulty or trial that has to do with our um our desires and that fitna has to do with the various ways the shaitan and our desires and our inclinations lead us to disobedience to Allah by things like uh, zina, you know, fornication or adultery or masturbation or um, the Allah or homosexuality for those who struggle with that and pornography and all the various types of ways that the shaitan appeals through your shahwat, through your desires. So predominantly there you're talking about the sins especially associated with sinful desires, meaning desires where you go beyond the bounds because it's okay to desire the opposite uh, sex of Kramakama law, to have a healthy Islamic relationship, uh, you know, bidnillah based on love and muadda uh, and rahmah, you know, love and mercy. This is khayr azim. This is the maqsad. But 
when it is done illegally in disobedience to a law, when people are doing the evil things that many of the people in this time fall into, the various types of, uh, of sinfulness and wickedness in illicit relationships, then those things, that is sinful. And that is with your hawa, and that is the shahwat. And that shahwat, it can lead to the destruction of you and your Islam. It can lead to an effect on your aqidah in that you believe that what you're doing is lawful. It's okay to be dancing at the nightclub or be a dancer. It's okay to uh, have a girlfriend or boyfriend. It's okay uh, to be in a homosexual relationship. It's okay to do this and that because you begin to believe that your sins are not hurting anyone else. And so that they are really not sins at all, that they are uh, a choice or a lifestyle or, or whatever the case may be. But you begin to believe and make istihlal of your desires. And as Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentioned about the concept of this, uh, of sinfulness. He said, Al-Ma'asi Barid al-Kufr That sinfulness It is the Means to disbelief Sinfulness Is the means to disbelief So By doing sinfulness It can actually lead you to disbelief It doesn't mean it's disbelief So the one who Even commits homosexuality Or is in those kind of relationship and they have though they struggle with that as a form of desires they are not disbelievers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they still can be Muslim but as long as they acknowledge that what they're doing is sinful that this is absolutely not acceptable in Islam and it goes against the fitra that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us and it's very important that we understand that fitna and we do everything possible to fight it and put a barrier between us and it. And that comes through taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that comes through obedience to Allah. And everyone has to find their own means, meaning some people they really need to remove themselves from those types of environments. Like in an extreme way, like they need to make hijrah. And the Prophet wasallam said that one of the best hijrah that a person can do <clears throat> is hijrah from their, uh, from ma'asi, you know, hijrah from your sins. Meaning, you leaving your sins and you're going to ta'atillah. You're going to obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some people, they need to <clears throat> do that through a, by a physical means, by by physically being out of environments that cause them to struggle or cause them to sin or immerse them in sin. And some people may not have that luxury or are unable or unwilling to, but they are able to leave the sins without a physical migration that maybe they can stop doing sins for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they can make toba to Allah azawajal and they can exercise taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is putting that shield up between them and their sins and that taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is doing the acts of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his commandments and avoiding his prohibitions. This is taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so <clears throat> that is another means some people are able to deal with things in that way, which is a na'ma minni amillah. And by doing extra acts of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by fasting more, uh, more salat, and more 
uh, good deeds. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be from the people of good deeds. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, protects us and preserves us and guides us to the sawab. Because we're never free from being in need <laughs> to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nahnu fuqara wa huwa ghani. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is self-sufficient. He doesn't need us, but we need him. We need his help and his assistance. We need help worshiping him. We need help thanking him. We need help in perfecting our ibadah according to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa anni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatika wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.